We are the people of the United States of America. We are linked by one thing and one thing only, and that is a framework of law that sets forth the ideals and values that define us. That's the Constitution of the United States of America. And the moment we deviate from the Constitution, we cease to function as Americans. The Constitution does not begin, I, the President of the United States, or we, the Congress of the United States. The preamble begins, we, the people of the United States of America. And that's so important, because this is our nation, and it is a nation worth fighting for. Now, how do we pick our fights? Well, I believe in citizenship. I believe in active citizenship. We talk about the media. I can guarantee pretty much, unless there's a reporter from the New York Times here to prove me wrong, that this wonderful festival is not being covered by mainstream media. <laughs> Shame on them, because I'm going to give you some news you're not going to get anywhere else. You see, I'm somebody who believes in fighting for my country, as you do. This is a fighting Bob Fest, after all, is it not? There are things worth fighting for. But I choose the option of exhausting all venues short of war before making that decision to send the wonderful men and women who serve us in the armed services off into harm's way. I believe in diplomacy. I believe in interaction. You know, there was a time when I was an insider's insider. I used to have all the little special clearances. I had the little passes that could get me anywhere I wanted in the government. I was that, man. I was that. I was a person of note in the government. And then I left. And something strange happened. I became a person of interest. A person of interest to the United States government. The first time I became a person of interest was in 2000, when I decided to shake up the way mainstream media was dealing with the issue of Iraq. And I said, you know, I speak at colleges, I speak at high schools, I speak on the radio, but that's not working. What I need to do is make a mainstream documentary talking about weapons of mass destruction. So I did so. Now, in order to do this, I had to go to Iraq and interview members of the Iraqi government because I believe that all sides of the story must be told, not just one side of the story. Well, I became a person of interest. The FBI took a great interest in not just me, but my wife, my kids, my friends, my community, every aspect of my life. But I made the documentary anyways. And then in 2002, I decided that I once again had to shake up the way the country was dealing with the issue of Iraq. You see, weapons inspectors had been out of Iraq for four years at that time. Now, I knew when I left in 1998, and I'd been speaking as loud as I could, that we had fundamentally disarmed Iraq. And then unless somebody could demonstrate that Iraq had reconstituted its weapons, you couldn't make a case that Iraq had these weapons. And the government wasn't able to do that, but the American people weren't buying into it because they were told, how do we know? You see, there are no inspectors in Iraq today. So what do we know? What have the Iraqis been up to for the last four years? And because we don't know, we are ignorant. And from the ignorance comes fear, fear that is manipulated by politicians for their own purposes. So I needed to fight through the ignorance, and I decided to go to Iraq to address the Iraqi parliament, to make a demand that the Iraqi government must allow inspectors back in without precondition, that the only way, the only path to peace was through the path of inspections. And I went to Iraq. I spoke to the Iraqi parliament. I spoke to the Iraqi government. And five days after I returned, Saddam Hussein said, we are letting the inspectors back in without precondition. It was a wonderful moment, you know, because it was diplomacy. That's what it's about. And my actions so feared the U.S. government that I became a person of great interest. Now, we are in a new time. Iraq is a situation that now has manifested itself in an American invasion and occupation. And while a lot of people are focused on Iraq, I'm one who's looking down the horizon and recognize that there's another problem set out there, the problem of Iran. We are told today that Iran is a threat worthy of war. We are told today that Iran has a nuclear weapons program. We are told today that Iran is the largest state sponsor of terror in the world today. We are told that if we do not take action against Iran now, there could be events down the road that make 
what occurred on September 11th, 2001, pale in comparison. This is what we're told. And again, the American people, wallowing in their collective ignorance, are buying this story. So it's time to shake it up again. It's time to go out and change the paradigm of how the United States and Iran relates with one another. So I'm involved in a project that seeks to have the Iranian government enter into a voluntary moratorium of ballistic missile testing to stop testing missiles. And then to approach the United Nations and offer to enter into a regional missile disarmament program, inclusive of Iran's missiles and others. Now what this does, you see, because the cornerstone of the Bush administration and I will say Barack Obama's position against Iran is that Iran's nuclear program poses a threat because it can serve as the basis of a nuclear weapons program that can be delivered by ballistic missiles to Europe and the region, including Israel. Now, I have learned that you don't debate the U.S. government on its terms. It is futile to sit here and convince people that Iran does not have a nuclear weapons program. What you can do, however, is demonstrate that Iran does not have a delivery system for nuclear weapons by having the Iranians themselves walk away from the missile program. And if the Iranians do this, it undercuts the Bush administration's claims that they are pursuing a nuclear weapons program. It does something else, too. Because right now, as we speak, Poland has agreed to allow a missile defense system on Polish soil. The Czech government has agreed to allow a radar system and collectively they say that this missile defense shield is needed because of the threat posed by Iran's missiles. Now, if Iran agrees to a moratorium and agrees to disarmament, there's no longer a justification for this missile shield. And I have a funny feeling the Europeans, who are not only looking at Iran, but also looking at Russia, saying this is like sticking our finger in their eye, will walk away from the ballistic missile shield, thereby creating the conditions of normalization of relations between Europe and Russia and create the conditions of peace, which of course is what we want. We want peace to break out all over. It's not what, however, the U.S. government wants. It's not what John McCain wants. It's not what Barack Obama wants. Through this initiative, if the Iranians act on it, we undercut the justification, the immediacy for the need for military action now. So we make it very difficult for George W. Bush to launch a military strike against Iran. And because we're talking about a one-year moratorium, it extends into the administration of the next president. So Barack Obama says that he's a man who can sit down and talk to people. I'm going to help build a window of opportunity for that talk to take place. It's incumbent, however, on we the people to ensure that we light the fire under old Barack's feet so he doesn't get too comfortable in his new abode in Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. Now, I've been doing this for some time. I was just in Europe traveling around making some, uh, doing some meetings, trying to arrange all of this, and uh, came back, and I got a phone call from a, a colleague. He said, I just want to let you know that uh, two clowns, that's his word for the FBI. Hello, FBI agents in the audience. God bless you. We love you, too. <laughs> two clowns came to his house, knocked on his door, I wanted to talk to him about recent conversations he had with a person of interest, that would be me, about Iran. Now, he told the clowns to get the hell out of his face. He's a former Marines. We Marines tend to stick together like that. But uh, he said, get out of my face. But the point is, I am now, once again, a person of interest to the government of the United States, not because I'm violating the law, but because I have taken actions as a citizen that reduce the potential of armed conflict. Somehow, these actions are deemed by the United States government to be incompatible with not only policy, but also the government itself. I am being accused of somehow carrying out treason, sedition, against a nation that I have sworn to defend its constitution with my life. I am a person of interest, ladies and gentlemen, 
And this is deemed to be a threat. Well, you know what? Fighting Bob Festival. The reason why I've shared this story with you is I'd like you to become people of interest. I'd like us to be able to unite and tell the United States government that if standing up for values, if standing up for ideals, if standing up for peace, if standing up for diplomacy is sedition, then let it begin here, now, in Wisconsin.